Hi again everyone. This video is going to be just a really quick introduction to how Grok actually programming works. Um, so we're going to have a very brief look at how we go about the introduction lesson that you have been assigned by your teacher. So here I have the Grok dashboard or the launch pad, sorry. Um, and what I've done is I've just searched for the word introduction so that I could find it more quickly. Again, it may be up the top already here if it's just been assigned to you, but you can easily find it uh, in here. So I'm going to have a look at the introduction to programming in Blockly. So this is the one that is going to use the drag and drop blocks to make a program. So I'm just going to press uh, to go into this one. Now, because I have been into this before, I've got some progress already showing up, a couple of questions done, but let's just have a look at the whole thing from the beginning. So what I'd normally do once I start a new one is just go to the first module. Now, very quickly again, we can open this up to see the chapter pieces if you like, uh, but again, we're gonna just follow it through step by step. So our first circle is our first piece of teacher notes, sorry, of our student notes. Now, in all the notes, this is the basic setup. So we can read through the information we might have uh, some blocks or information talking about things that are external to Grok. So you can click on these links to go to the Scratch website, the Python website, uh, and a different course here on programming. Again, these are not required, but if you're interested in further developing uh, or other information, you might like to go and have a look at those. But what is important is we can see here that we have this block of active code. So active code in uh, Grok is something that you can actually run in the question and even modify to really try and understand what it's doing. Another new feature, which is not in every module yet, but in most of the common ones, is a narration button up here. So if I click on this, it will actually essentially read me what's on the screen. So this can be very useful for some of us uh, if we're having some trouble with reading the text. So I need to very carefully read what's here and I need to make sure that I follow any instructions. So this one's uh, asking us to click the play button. So it's really just about teaching us that we can play code or run code in the uh, text itself. And as I said, if I want to, I can uh, change this. So I might say, hello, year seven. And if I run this now, I will get a different response. So I haven't learned what these pieces of code are yet, I've just learned that I can now run code in here. And if I get a bit confused or I've stuffed something up maybe, I can just press this button to switch it back to the original uh, exactly how it was when I first arrived. Now when I go to the next slide, I have my next piece of learning. So here it's going to talk about what this print block means. So we're going to learn about what this does. So we read through this carefully and we read through what a string is, which is this uh, green one here, and we read through it all carefully. We can run things as we go. So if we run this uh, one at the moment, nothing will happen because it's missing something and so on and so forth. We get back down to here where we can run something. So we go to the next slide, which happens to be our diamond. So when we get there, this is where Now that we've arrived at the diamond, which is a question, uh, it's something that we need to now do. So the idea is that you have learned about things in the dots earlier that lead up to the diamond, which is basically testing your knowledge. It will also rely on things that you learned in previous sections. So when we go to the next part, we will learn some new pieces of code, but we don't forget everything we just learned. We, of course, have to remember and use those bits of information as well as the new things that we learn. Again, we have a narration button so we can have the question read to us. Um, you'll not have solutions or teacher's notes available to you as a student. Uh, you'll just have the problem. Now, in the problem, it is extremely important that you read everything carefully. Most of the time when students say they've got something wrong, it's because they didn't bother to read, they just try to rush ahead. So I read it carefully and it says that my program says, hello world, okay? Um, so we are going to basically recreate what we saw earlier. One of the things about the Blockly programming is it only gives you the things that might be useful. 
There are obviously a lot more uh, commands that we could have and we'll, as we learn them, this list here increases. So at the moment we have one thing for strings and we have one thing for, that has two different types of output. Okay, so again, if we've read the steps earlier, we will hopefully understand what these two different print options mean. What I'll end up doing is I'll end up dragging a print out and I'll end up bringing a string into there so that I'm going to print something to the screen. Now I'm going to give you a really important piece of advice right now. So if you haven't been paying huge attention, do so now. One of the next most common mistakes that students make is with simple things like formatting. So over here in the question, it is telling us that we have to have hello world, but notice the capital letters for H and W, notice the comma, notice the exclamation mark, notice the space between the words. It's very, very easy when people come over here, they do things like this and they just type hello world and they forget about all the punctuation spaces and other things. So my advice to you is not to type things like that out, but to highlight them and simply copy them and paste them into your program. It will pretty much guarantee that you won't get errors because of punctuation. And what we'll see, and I'll do it deliberately in a moment, is that you will get it wrong if your punctuation is incorrect. Okay, so let's have a go. I'm going to take the exclamation mark off this. I'm going to run the program. And as I can see down here in my submission area, my output, that it has run. The program has worked perfectly, but it's not actually correct. Well, let's find out actually. So now that I have run it, I'm going to mark my program. Yep, I think I'm sure. And here we go, we have an error. So these error messages are also very important. This is the third most important piece of information I'll give you. Always read your error messages. It's telling us that it's tested that the words are correct. So we know from this error message that we don't have an issue with the words themselves. It's tested white spaces and they are correct. White space is the spaces between words. So again, we know that they are correct. It has tested capitalization and it's also said they are okay. So we don't have to worry about any of those at the moment. But then we get down here and said it did not print out the correct punctuation. So straight away, we know that our problem is about punctuation, not capitals, white space, or, or the words themselves. The first box is showing us what our program did, and the second is what it should be. And if I look carefully, I notice that I don't have the exclamation mark on the end, okay? So a lot of people, again, this will pop up and they'll just quickly close it and go, I don't know what's wrong. Read your error messages carefully. So I'm gonna come back to my piece of work. I'm gonna put my exclamation mark in. I have to run it again to test it is working. And then I can remark my work to see whether I've now passed all the tests. And that is what I have. So I'm really well set now. So I'm going to now go to my next slide. So again, I'm back into a circle, into a piece of learning. So here, so here I am learning something new. Again, uh, I read through this carefully. I go to the next slide. All right, and this is talking about how we can join multiple print statements together. Okay, so again, I need to read through this carefully, play them if need be, to really understand it. So each print seems to do it in a separate line. That's what it's trying to teach you. And when I go next again, I get a new question. So this one says that the haiku is a three line Japanese poem. I won't read it word for word, but basically it's asking you to make a three line poem. So if you think about it, we just saw an example. If I go back one step, here is an example Here is an example with multiple lines. It has four lines in here, right? not three, but if we think about it, what is a, a three line haiku going to be? Just three print statements. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put three print statements straight away. Now taking, if I've got a print statement, I'm going to need a string to put in it, string just being text. So I'm going to put that in here as well. So I'm basically getting things ready. 
And remembering what I said earlier, don't type them out, copy them, paste them. So I'm going to copy the first line into this line here. I'm going to copy the second line into my second print statement. And I'm going to copy the third one into my third print statement. So I'm fairly confident that I haven't got any errors. Absolutely going to run it. Okay. I'm going to really look at what's here and look at the example, make sure that I think they're right. And then I'm going to mark again. And in this case, I've got it all right on the first time. So my fourth big tip for you is to think about what you've just learned. In almost all situations, the question is asking you for something very similar to something you've just seen. We're being asked for a three line program here, or sorry, three print line program here, and we just saw one that's very, very similar with four lines. So it sometimes pays to go back and just have another look at the samples that you've been given because very, very often they're similar. They'll never be the same. You can't just copy and paste it, but they might be very similar. Okay, so that is a very basic introduction to how to actually go through a task here on Grok. You need to keep reading through each of the dots, try each of the uh, diamonds to go through the task itself, make sure you check carefully, follow those steps that I suggested, those, those guides, which is to make sure you copy and paste, to make sure that you read carefully, to read your error messages carefully, to make sure you're not getting a mistake. Um, and also to, just to go back and look at the samples again if you're not sure, because nine times out of ten, they're very, very similar to the question you're being asked.